Howdy, folks. I'm Old Cactus Jack, and welcome to uh, Community Talk. I have here with my old partner here, Rocky McFarland, uh, alias Dick Yeager, the outlaw that roamed this area many years ago. We're here to tell you a little bit about today, about the Chisholm Trail Coalition Group. And uh, Rocky is involved with this organization. And Rocky, uh, I know you guys do some of the walk tours around the downtown area. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we, uh, we once a month we'd go out and we'd have, uh, we'd sell tickets and go out, um, you Cactus Jack would, be the host and he'd go around the square telling about all the historic things that are going on in, in Enid. It, yeah, it went on. I, yeah, it, it's kind of fascinating, you know, because Enid started after the land run of 1893. So our downtown area was was set aside in the square that it is today. Correct. Uh, and uh, it's kind of interesting that everything that seemed to happen of any significance happened on the square before it happened anywhere else because that was the center of our town. You bet. It uh, the, just, they had the courthouse and they had the first jail of downtown. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That's where I come into play is that I was, uh, I was one of the first outlaws that stepped foot in the first uh, jail <laughs> in Enid. And uh, they had chased me all around the countryside and finally shot me and brought me back to you this here, your, your fine town and nope. put me in there. Wasn't that jail located just right kind of where the post office is today? Right uh, in the parking lot on the west side of the post office, uh, it looked like, is in the in the picture. And uh, First National, or Security National Bank is, uh, we got pictures of that that shows the France brother, brothers had a hardware and tax shop there. And uh, that's, a, that's where they had the first water well in Enid. I'll be darned. And uh, they, they put it there, and the uh, Security National Bank still has a plaque out there on the sidewalk that says this is where the first well was. Yeah. Now, you also take them into the courthouse and show them those murals that are painted on the wall. Yes, they were uh, painted many, many years ago, and they've been refurbished, and, and they are really something to see if anybody can go in the, in the courthouse and see these wonderful paintings all over the courthouse walls. And it uh, it's quite a sight. Uh, I think they were put in there in the 30s, I believe. Yeah, 1935 is what I understand. And uh, I think it was even the same person, wasn't it, uh, that did it all, or was it yeah, WPA? Uh, well, it was a lady that the WPA had hired, mm. and uh, she was hired to paint those. She was a nationally known muralist and uh, they hired her. Uh, boy, I wish I could remember uh, the rate of pay they paid her, but it wasn't very much. <laughs> but she needed the money, so she agreed to, to paint those murals on there. And, and they're still as vivid today as they were when she painted them in 1935. Well, so, we're, this coalition that we're a member of is a nonprofit organization that uh, all the characters that we have in this walk around tour or the tombstone tales that we put on in October. Oh yeah. In the, in the Enid Cemetery telling about all the fascinating people that are in our cemetery and telling their stories. Uh, we, the, all the characters are not paid and they're all volunteers. That's and it. they spend a lot of time out there and they do a lot of memorizing yeah. to make sure that everybody that's in uh, on this tour has a good time. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, uh, like you said, uh, the Chisholm Trail Coalition is a nonprofit organization, a 5013C, and all of that money goes towards operating, you know, our various programs that we have but you're, you're right, nobody on the board or nobody that's a reenactment character gets paid anything. And we've got a lot of volunteers that step forward every year. The, the, uh, the tour out at the cemetery in October, uh, there's uh, 13 volunteers that are reenactment characters out of that thing. And uh, they tell that same story 
four times uh, each night. For two nights. Yeah, yeah, for two nights. They got to tell it four times for each of the wagons that go through, and there's three wagons. So they're telling that story, boo coos the time, and, and, and by we, the end of the night, they're usually pretty tired. <laughs> and we usually kind of alter from our script, too, and we kind of play it by ear just a little bit once in a while, too. But that's where I, even my character, he's supposed to have been buried out there, and they do not have any headstone. They don't have anything. I don't even think they've got a record of him being out there, but uh, that's... And this, and this Tombstone Tales, too, just to let people know that the cemetery is not scary. It's, yeah. it's informative. It's, um, it's, it's about historical things that uh, people have done that's in the cemetery. Yeah, we, we've got a uh, Congressional Medal of Honor winner that's buried out there that nobody even knew anything about till we started this. And I might uh, tell the folks that the way we got started with this is that years ago, uh, the lady that was running the cemetery uh, found an old box of newspaper clippings stuck back in the vault that had all of these stories that were printed in the newspaper over the years about various people that died and, and were buried out there. So all of these facts that we give people are historical facts. I mean, you know, we're not making a story up. Correct. Uh, we tell it as good as, as we can tell it. We make sure all of the dates and the information is correct but uh, uh, so that's that's kind of how that thing got started and where we got most of the history and information from and and uh, it was started in uh, uh, 1876 so uh, I'm sorry not well I've forgotten when it is Tammy could probably tell us I'll have to call her the cemetery yeah, yeah like I, 1897 nah I there you go I and, uh, I had, I had my character, he was he was shot and and put in that uh, jail in 1895. Oh, okay. So, uh, and they had so a where did they first bury him? They buried me out by the Champlin Mansion in a, what they call the Pauper's Field, and uh, they put me out there in an unmarked grave, and so they st they wanted to uh, develop that area, so they supposedly dug us all up and put us over in a corner at the new cemetery on East Willow, West Willow. So East that was uh, 1897. 1897, I believe. Okay. And so uh, not all of those people had markers to tell who they were digging up or did they get everybody? They picked up, they got everybody with markers. But, uh, <laughs> And there's uh, people that have discussed that uh, people digging over there in that area have come up with some strange looking pieces of wood. And, uh, and a few people have come up with some bones that, that uh, wow. been to come around there that they, uh, they dig, they, when they was developing that area and then they was digging down deep, they'd come across this stuff. Huh. And uh, uh, Cactus, you ought to tell them about uh, the, our working all, all of this, what we just come across and bought to here a while back to, 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 oh, yeah. to extend our, our little bit of a history of Oklahoma and Enid. Well, we, uh, the Chisholm Trail Coalition just purchased a uh, 1994 uh, trolley, an old style rubber tire wheel trolley, uh, similar to what you might see down at Bricktown years ago. They first had some down there. And uh, we, uh, we purchased that. We've been looking for one for over three years. And all of the money that we've been making from the tours and Tombstone Tales and uh, downtown walking tours, we've been saving that money. We've been accumulating it, hoping to be able to buy a trolley. And what we're doing with the trolley is expanding our area, a territory of, of uh, telling the history of the Chisholm Trail, for example. Uh, since it ran right through our area, uh, we're taking that trolley on uh, Saturday tours, about a four-hour tour. In fact, we have one scheduled for this Saturday morning. If people are interested in, in getting a ticket for that, they can call the Visitors Bureau here in Enid and uh, arrange to get a ticket. But it's a four-hour tour going north out of Enid, and we'll stop at about eight different locations along the highway and, and different areas 
that have significant value of history and a lot of information. It's always surprising to me that when we do these tours, that people always come back and say, you know, I've lived here all my life, but I never realized half of this stuff happened or I didn't realize, you know, why this particular area was called Skeleton Creek Ranch. Correct. Uh, we've got just, just a lot of interesting history. One of the stops going north will be the old uh, round barn, uh, Marvis Bulis up at uh, Pond Creek. And uh, that's kind of a fascinating uh, structure and how he built that thing. You know, I've been around time. here since 1895, and I don't know any about <laughs> any, anything about a lot of these areas. I, well, you was, you was always out holding up the bank or yeah, a stagecoach or something. Well, they chased me. They chased me back over there around Romano's is where they, they uh, caught me over Finally there. Co and, cornered you. And gut shot me. Um, I'm still all swelled up from that. <laughs> And uh, so that uh, they caught me over there and brought me back. So, it, well, how, uh, how long did you, uh, are you? Apparently, you lived for a while when they brought you back. And put I you lived in the here jail. for 30 days, and uh, people around this fine town come and visited me and brought me buckets of fried chicken. Really? <laughs> Baskets of fried chicken. Baskets. They didn't have uh, Kentucky Fried buckets then, <laughs> and they. Uh, and then bottles of cold beer. I was quite the celebrity. Well, I bet you were. And uh, they, <laughs> lived uh, a good life for 30 days. That's huh? right. And people, I've, to this day, we we've even met and talked to a couple of people that said they were they'd heard stories about from their from their relatives that they had actually visited me. Had gone through there, huh? And uh, they, but uh, then I I caught the lead poisoning, and I uh, was. Uh, said a few choice words and <laughs> died, and they put me out there at the pauper's field without a headstone, so. Well, that's an unfortunate life and death you lived there, partner. Yeah. Uh, well, that's gonna wrap it up for us here in Community Talk. We'd like to thank everybody for tuning in, and, and uh, if you're interested in any of our tours, call the Visitors Bureau. Uh, they have a, a, a record of the dates of the tours, and you can run up and down the Chisholm Trail going south out of town or north out of town or get involved with the Tombstone Tales, which comes up in, in October. And we do have 23 seats in this trolley car to, for, to, to hold a, a whole gang of you to go on these tours. And the phone number for the Visitors Bureau is... 233-ENID. <laughs> there you go. Well, thanks again. We'll see you later, little buckaroo. Hi, I'm Ashley Gore with Autry Technology Center, coordinator for business and industry services. If you're interested in a class, flip through our catalog and see if we have anything to offer. Otherwise, we can do customized training as well. Feel free to contact us at Autry Technology Center and ask for Ashley Gore. Watch for us on Community Talk.